So just a, a, a little bit better of a um, commit, build, deploy, run graphic of where Caverno fits in. At the commit stage, you can check that those manifests that are being checked in, before they get checked in, that they conform to the policies that you want. And by the way, they're the same policies that you install in a cluster. So it's not like that you have to write a bespoke set of checks. Whatever you have in the cluster, you can apply in the pipeline to know consistently what the result's going to be before you actually attempt it. So that's in the commit phase. Obviously, signing your own container images is an extremely important initiative. Caverno can help on the verification stage. All the way through the run, whatever the policies that you have that are checking those things at the beginning of your pipeline are the same policies that get uh, deployed and ensure that runtime things, even if they happen to skirt through the, the CI pipeline, get enforced and the uh, same behavior is applied. From the use case perspective, there are a ton that span from the CI CD pipeline all the way to running inside of a cluster. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drain this entire slide, but you can see just some examples and there are others. There are some examples, but from the CI CD pipeline, you know, you want to be able to check in your manifests, but before you accept manifests, you want to be able to apply whatever the same checks that are going on in your cluster in your pli pli pipeline so that they don't make it to the cluster if they're not okay. And also, if you wanted to change manifests so that you can store them in Git, of course, you can do that as well. But but Caverno has plumbing that goes all the way through this. So the CLI can be used in the CI CD pipeline. You can do things like uh, whenever a PR is open. I'm not sure if you use GitHub or GitLab or something else for on-prem. You can plumb that up to it and apply the policies that are the same policies that are in the cluster and see what would happen. And also do things like checking that the resources that you expect to allow, you can declare in a specific test manifest, hey, these should be allowed. Let's make sure with the next upgraded version that they continue to be allowed. And then running all the way, of course, in, into the cluster, I talked about background our admission control, but also background scans, which I'll get into in just a little bit here. So, you know, the, the quintessential use cases for any admission controller are things like pod security. And if you're not using pod security today in any way, shape, or form, this is a great and easy way to get started with that everybody should be doing. Doesn't matter whether you use Caverno or whether you use something else, you need to be enforcing pod security. Kubernetes is not secure by default, despite what some may believe. So ensuring things like pods don't run as root, uh, hosts or pods don't attempt to mount namespaces, they don't run with uh, GID zero, all these types of things you need to be enforcing. Um, but you know, from the security perspective, and, and this is kind of the, the main angle that people think about when they think about admission controllers, but Caverna was so, more, so much more capable than just security, but you can see some of the use cases around there. Uh, image signing and verification, as part of your software supply chain, you not only want to ensure that, you know, in your authoring pipelines that, you know, things are working properly, but you want to make sure before they even get pulled into a cluster that they get validated. So in the end, that should work. And things like reports so that security teams can understand what's going on from an auditing and just simple visibility perspective, what's going on, what was allowed, why was it allowed, things like that. Um, Caverno has a lot of use cases for operations teams. So one of the uh, one of the things that that um, that makes Caverno extremely popular for platform and ops teams are these abilities for do for doing things like namespaces as a service. You create a namespace with a bunch of other resources that are in it. Caverno can generate all of those resources for you based on policy defined, you know, as a manifest that you store in Git. So there's no more you know, having to go and run bash scripts and, you know, spit out resource quotas and limit ranges and all that, you can define all of that simple, simply in a YAML policy, install it in the cluster, version it in Git, and Caverna will go and operate on that and generate all those things. A lot of other things down there, I could, you know, give you a sermon on each one of these. We probably have blogs on almost all of them at this point in time. Um, some other things that are that are super nice for operations teams um, being able to do things like uh, inject uh, certificates as volumes, being able to inject sidecars, being able to copy and then sync config maps and secrets across the entire cluster, 
And as I mentioned on the previous one in 1.9, we've got the new cleanup ability. So you can remove stale resources that are in your cluster on a policy definition. Um, on the cost governance side, you know, those that are running in clouds like you are with EKS, somebody creates a load balancer, spins up an ALB, that's going to cost you money. You probably want to make sure that that type of uh, attempt, even though somebody has ability to create services, you carefully gate because that has cost ramifications. So Caverno is able to help there as well with being able to set things like those quotas when you generate names, namespaces, being able to watch for those things like load balancers that are going to have cost ramifications and setting basic things like requests and limits, both from a validation and a mutation perspective, and a lot more. But the cost is a domain that has to be considered, especially when you run in the cloud, as I'm sure you all understand and, and appreciate. So these are just, again, a, a snippet of the types of use cases uh, that Caverno can address in a number of its capabilities that are out there. So I'm not, I'm not going to drain all of this, but again, um, you know, want to emphasize that Caverno is a tool that's just as capable for security and governance as it is for platform and ops teams because it allows for automation. And that's not something that other policy engines really do. So all of these capabilities come together and enable not only some really powerful capabilities, but you can hand things off from one policy and rule to another so that you get these large, these high level use cases that you can solve without involving other tools. And that's a big, that's a big win um, for Kubernetes because, you know, doesn't matter what scale you use, you have to use multiple tools. But if you can use fewer tools rather than more tools, that's a win because that's more stuff to reason about, or that those are fewer things to reason about, fewer, fewer things to break and maintain, all of that type of stuff. So what we what we often see is that uh, people start using Caverno for things like basic validation use cases like pod security that I described. But then when they realize the full power of it, they start using more and more and more rule types. And then they start to uh, realize that I don't need these three other tools to do what Caverno can do. That simplifies your operations. That makes, and, 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 and being able to control that behavior, all is policy as code that you can store in version and deploy as just another YAML manifest is extremely powerful and also uh, it makes lives for operators a lot easier. Okay, so multi-tenancy, just to touch on this really quickly, um, you know, if you're using multi-tenancy and that could be, that that's not necessarily Coke versus Pepsi, that could be your engineering, your HR, your prod A, prod B, whatever the case, um, you know, Kubernetes has several constructs that, that can work with you, um, but very often you have to either provide some bespoke automation for those like bash scripts or something else. There are some other tools that are out there um, but depending on what you need, um, you know, you have to create these or you have to figure out how that happens. Policies can be used to do things like generate those per namespace defaults, whether they're like resource quotas or limit ranges, and also enforce things like multi-tenant configurations through making sure that the network policy is created, making sure that they exist, um, storage classes, you know, all sorts of things like this. So it's really a, a full multi-tenancy provisioner if that's something that you're doing. And again, everybody defines multi-tenancy a little bit differently, but just keep those things in mind that you don't necessarily have to make it more complex. You can make it easier and define them all by policies that you can you know, version and get um, alongside your other Caverno policies that do your standard validations and mutations. Um, mentioned uh, early on that one of the things Caverno ha has done for a while, actually, uh, it, it, it was one of the first um, uh, engines that could do uh, image verification without needing any other bolt-on, uh, any other bolt-on components. So, um, you know, the, the flow looks a little bit like this, where you, you define a policy, the policy says which images that you want to check. It has things like your key, other annotations. Um, and this is all, by the way, using SIG store cosign. So Caverno is looking to add support for Notary V2 in the next version, but right now uh, SIG store cosign is what we're currently using. So depending on how you use cosign to sign your images, you, you codify that in a policy. 
And then whenever that image uh, gets built through a trigger, that will get signed and pushed to the OCI registry. You can do things like attest to images and also have those stored in addition to your signatures. And then when that image gets pulled down, because that Caverno policy exists in your cluster, then the policy will be able to validate the things that are inside of that, whether that's an image signature, any of these attestations, before that's allowed to run. So this is a little bit more of the, the signing and verification that uh, Caverno can do. And here's an example of what that may look like. Now, this is there's obviously a lot of stuff going on in here, but very simply, this checks for provenance. So you 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 may be doing this now. If not, you may be doing it later, which is to create a provenance for every image that you're building so that you can know who created it, when was it created, what were the circumstances around its creation, checking for a software bill of materials, and then doing things like checking for a vulnerability scan. But that vulnerability scan has additional constraints that are around it. it needs to be created by a scanner that you run and control. It needs to be no older than 24 hours because you don't want somebody to be able to you know, uh, denial of service, you accessing a scan, and that scan actually has to have no high or critical vulnerabilities. All of these things are codified in this one policy as YAML, and you can see under the attestations, these are the, the predicates that we're checking that correspond to each one of these, and these are the conditions for the image check. And again, standard Kubernetes expressions, tripartite expressions, no code anywhere in here. And in this case, we're checking this, any images that come from this repo are going to be checked. 